Mr. Nikos Motsios has recently retired from the Greek Armed Forces, where he served with distinction as an army officer, retiring at the rank of Brigadier General. Among the high-level positions that Mr. Votsios occupied in the past were that of the Section Head, Intelligence Plans and Policy at NATO Supreme Headquarters, Allied Powers Europe, or SHAPE, and the International Relations Director at the Ministry of National Defense in Athens, Greece. In this role, Mr. Votsios was responsible for international defense cooperation and the development of the Ministry of Defense policy concerning NATO and the EU. So on behalf of BOGS, thank you so much, Mr. Votsios, for being here today. Thank you that you gave me the opportunity. Uh, so just to break the ice a little bit, I, I thought it would be interesting to ask you first a little bit about your journey into the Greek Armed Forces. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm curious, uh, as we're discussing this, if you think this might influence your perspective on civil military relations. Mm -hmm. So I, I graduated to the military academy in 1988, long time ago, just before, just at the time that, uh, that uh, collapsed the Soviet Union. Uh, interesting times. And I was as an artillery officer. So for many years, I was in artillery units. Then I have uh, a more staff officer career, uh, serving at NATO, as you said, at the UN mission in uh, Georgia, Abkhazia in 2000. Uh, and uh, finally, it was a, uh, I was more specialized with international relations because I worked in the international relations department of the MOD as a major and then as a lieutenant general. And I returned back as a director in the same directorate, having to do with EU, NATO, and uh, cooperate with civil sector, but not for crisis, mainly not for crisis, but in a policy, policy level with MFA, the Minister of Interior. Uh, so, yes, I have experience for cooperation between civil and military uh, both at the level of the unit as an officer, but also as a policy policy officer. And uh, yeah, I don't know, do, do you want something more to say to, 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 to uh, focus more in my experience regarding the civil emergency? Uh, yeah, that would be, uh, yeah, so if you would, uh, we'd love to hear more if you can expound upon uh, your yeah, experience with civil military coordination uh, and addressing natural and human-made mm -hmm. non-conflict related emergencies. If you have uh, examples from recent or past times? Yeah, I will start with the past time, as you said. So uh, when I started as, uh, as a platoon leader, that let's say in the 90s, uh, every summer we were in alert situation for the forest fires. Uh, uh, it was not so, so, so good period because you can imagine from the military people perspective, having especially if you are in an isolated island and you have the whole winter to be trained and um, operational training and education and uh, drills and exercises. And then you are expecting the summer to have uh, some rest and uh, to take your leaves. And then it started um, to be uh, on alert uh, because of the of the. Uh, uh, fires and that usually it was that the case in the islands. So the, the the perception of the military people that that period it was that it's not something that we want to do. It's something that we are forced to do. We don't understand why why we are doing that. Uh, moreover, we are not prepared. Uh, the whole winter we never had uh, an exercise or something uh, relative with uh, with this uh, with this uh, with this task. Uh, and uh, during the summer, we were uh, given a task and um, uh, that we could not fulfill with uh, success. The just uh, were more for surveillance um, than the story. And um, of course, that back in the 90s, it was just the beginning, the beginning of the involvement in uh, human-made um, disasters. And uh, there is also an, an example uh, from this period, I uh, remember that we were not in an island, but in the mainland, in uh, uh, close to Olympus Mountain. Maro knows maybe the area in Litohoro, uh, when uh, we have uh, very severe uh, and heavy snow, and uh, the whole region was immobilized and everything was paralyzed. Uh, so uh, uh, several villages were isolated, uh, homes and farms were isolated, and uh, nobody could help because all the civil, not so big civil uh, preparation, but it was uh, engaged in other areas. So we have the army. Okay, let's send the army. 
but uh, my unit it was an artillery unit. We were not engineers. We had not uh, proper proper equipment. Uh, we had uh, uh, armored vehicles for, for for guns and say, okay, use this to open the roads to the to the villages. The result was uh, almost a disaster. Almost we had a very serious accident, um, falling from uh, from a mountain. Uh, <laughs> we're very close, and finally we're where we were uh, stuck and isolated at the village, uh, close by the snow, and we had the villagers taking care of us. It was exactly the opposite from what we wanted to, to, to achieve. And um, this is because lack of preparation and uh, lack of equipment, but I will continue. So that was in the beginning, but in 2011, when I was um, a commander unit in uh, Rhodos Island, there things were much better, not perfect, but much better. Uh, we were a little bit better organized, not so much training again, uh, but uh, we have some, some basic plans to follow. Uh, of course, um, I don't know why we were not used, although existed fires uh, and we could uh, participate and help a bit, a bit more, we were not used. Again, the system failed somewhere. And I think now, I don't have experience now from, from the field, but what I read and uh, how I was informed are much, much better the situation. Of course, not perfect, but much better. But we'll continue later on that. So that's my experience. <laughs> oh, it um, sounds quite terrifying, your story about either from fighting fires or on the mountain without the, the proper training or like you said, I think you discussed a bit about the, the feeling of being forced to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm curious to think, do, do you think that this feeling, the sentiment that um, like that you felt at the time about um, that this isn't actually your mission, but something you're forced to do, do you think that could still hold true today? Hmm. This is a very good question. And I think that uh, some research should uh, be done because what I would say, it's my personal opinion from seeing a unit, uh, my unit. Yes. We were not convinced, maybe I was convinced, but I could not convince, or I didn't pay also the attention, but it was not my job only, that this is also an important task for the militaries to support the civilian sector, because we believe that we are trained for uh, defend our country, and we are trained for operational develop, the deployment, and this is uh, not a second task, not a first task, some will exist uh, at the end. So, we lack a Stratcom. Uh, I would suggest to my staff, if they ask me that, we need a serious Stratcom to convince and show the, the, the profit from the involvement and better show the appreciation of the locals to, to, to our face when happens that, because this stops very high to the hierarchy. Doesn't, um, doesn't go down to a single soldier, a single personnel that is engaged. And these people are who, uh, have the most uh, the most effort to to to, to do. So uh, yeah, I would I would propose uh, that needs to be investigated more. Maybe it's like that. Maybe it's not. But this is my personal again my personal perception of of, of, of this, uh, this 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 field. Well, thank you. That's such a it's really amazing to hear your perspective because um, so far in all of our interviews, you're our first person with a military background. Uh, who we're speaking with. So hearing um, your personal stories with this, I think um, brings a lot of uh, lessons and also the challenges faced uh, to light. So I'm, I'm curious uh, from what you were discussing from the 1990s until today, uh, what do you think were the changes that took place that maybe improved uh, the civil military coordination that was happening? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's more clear the framework. Uh, the framework that we are engaged in. It's the civil protection, the civil protection have a responsibility, and uh, we are assisting when the civil process, um, the civil the civil protection uh, who has the, the leading asked us. But it's not all the times like that. This is the framework, the majority of the times is followed, but uh, it's not all the times. And maybe we need much more to do in the details, what we call the military planning. It's we have the, the general plan, but then we need to be better prepared to coordinate because you know these operations are very complicated. 
it either were fires or floods or whatever, very complicated. A lot of people are gates, a lot of dangers exist. You have to do with civilians. So uh, I would say that uh, we need more. We have it now, but we need to increase what? Three, 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 three things. It, one is the training. We have to be training during in uh, in our normal uh, normal uh, training cycle to uh, to enter also training for this situation and it's different it's different the forest fire different the floods different uh, earthquakes depending on what we will ask to participate second is equipment we don't have equipment for for participating properly and third is the planning this these are three Three, three, three sectors that we still need to do more. Yeah, I, I think it's interesting that the issue you bring up about the framework as well, how that was almost the, the dial that moved, uh, that moves what we were needed for civil military coordination. So thank you for sharing those three points. I think it brings uh, to light something we need to continue working on in our research as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I also want to ask you, um, in terms of your work with SHAPE and also with the Ministry of Defense, did you see any trends developing in the use of military resources in civil military coordination? And were you involved perhaps in this training or planning aspect of civil military coordination? Mm -hmm. So uh, trends, as you say, um, yes, I see it. It's, it's a best practice that takes place now in Greece, and I think it will be the trend. This is my feeling that it will be the trend. Is you write in your report is the 747 Special Engineer Battalion. Uh, so it's a very successful uh, successful uh, initiative uh, because this battalion comprises a lot of different units, and allow me to say that maybe it's unique in um, European uh, armies because it has everything inside. Whatever happens. There is, there is uh, uh, something in this battalion, uh, a unit or a subunit that uh, can be used. And this, uh, this has to do with specialization. This uh, allows to have a better coordination with civil protection. The civil protection know that they can call, call them and uh, they will be ready. Of course, the question is, uh, can fulfill the military, the military tasks? Uh, is uh, better, is well prepared also for the military tasks. I want to believe, yes, it is. We can do both. It can do both, maybe a little bit of priority, one up, one down, but we can do both. And uh, I would like also to mention some examples from the recent, uh, the recent uh, uh, past. Uh, the, 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 this summer we have uh, a very huge uh, fire, uh, fire uh, forest fires. In, in Greece, especially in Navia. And uh, there, uh, the, 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 this brigade were uh, involved, uh, uh, this battalion told me, uh, involved from the beginning at the first line, together with the firefighting, not just for surveillance, but have very substantial contribution. Also, uh, some, the previous week, we have heavy rains, uh, first time after decades, we have so, 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 so heavy rains and we have a lot of foods. And especially also in the area, this is what happens with the climate <laughs> change and uh, mankind disasters. After the fires come the floods. So in this area, uh, a lot of catastrophes uh, took place. There, the, this, uh, this, uh, this battalion were called and uh, because the bridge uh, uh, collapsed and uh, the, some villages were isolated. So they intervene immediately and uh, they construct a fixed bridge to connect uh, the villages. So completely different cases, but they can they can fulfill all these different uh, these different cases. So my my understanding and my my uh, what I believe is that uh, the thread is to have specialized force from the army to have their military mission, but also to be more trained, better trained, better equipped uh, for for all these cases. And um, I want to say also that is uh, something that I was wondering is. Uh, uh, because I saw the army helping a lot to, during the migra migration crisis in uh, 2016 in Greece, where uh, we built a lot of camps and uh, tents and all this stuff. Uh, so another, another uh, way to assisting is that um, uh, 
uh, how to say that uh, to be prepared also with equipment that can uh, help in these cases. For example, to have uh, energy storages, to have uh, um, um, uh, how they call it, uh, wait, uh, um, uh, photovoltaic uh, equipment. Um, um, uh, wait. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, just I had some, uh, some words here. Um, uh, we need to see how we can set up a full and energy autonomy camp, mobile energy storage devices, small scale wind turbines, uh, photovoltaic panels, uh, uh, portable solar showers, water purifications, to have all these materials in order to have a real added value, not just because if something big happens and the whole town, 20,000 people must leave the town like happens with earthquake and sleep and uh, stay for a while outside or a chemical, uh, you know, uh, gas or all this. You need to be well equipped in order to, uh, to prepare these people to live for a longer period. And speaking of recent events, I was just curious really quickly to ask about the, the recent earthquake aftermath in Crete. Do you know if the battalion was deployed to address and help the, uh, civilians? No, but there were not, not special needs. Uh, there were not so many uh, pro problems. It was a big earthquake, but uh, you know, Greece is a little bit, I think, well prepared because we're <coughs> used now in earthquakes of this, of this scale and uh, not so many damages uh, took place. So it was not necessary. Always we will be the second, the second wave. Well, thank you so much. Um, and I think now we're ready to, to conclude. And I think pulling all the pieces together as we, we've spoken about, um, I'm really curious now in terms of, firstly, do you personally think that military asset, assets should be more normalized and streamlined into disaster management? Mm -hmm. And then my next question would be more of just what's next? What do you see as the next steps uh, for more effective civil military coordination? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As a military person, I will say uh, practice, exercises. Uh, maybe we, we, we do some exercises, but not, not, so, not so many. With the practice, you, 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 you uncover, you see what are the problems uh, in the communication, uh, at, uh, all these uh, very, very meaningful questions that you have in your paper that needs to be answered. Uh, I cannot answer it, but you can ask, uh, we said yesterday, maybe you can ask the, 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 the specialized the people in, um, in the staff, the staff that are used for that. Uh, and I really believe in specialization, not mass use of military people can help. Uh, you cannot have the whole 100,000 people that we have uh, in uniform uh, helping the, the, the civilian sector. It will be chaotic. But you can choose some very elegant or some, some, some troops, the logistics, that they have more of the logistics in their mission, that you don't, they are not so necessary in the front line. You can choose these and train, equip, and plan with them. So specialization will be what I believe that uh, it should be the trend. Well, what a, I think that's such an enlightening note to end on here. So especially with your, your personal background in this. So uh, Mr. Voltius, thank you so very much for your time today. Uh, it was such an honor uh, to speak with you. And I know Mario can say the same. So um, thank you for everything that in your time. I thank you. I think it's really good initiative. It's very you have to 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 contribute a lot in a sector that needs a lot to be done. It's start working, but not perfectly at least fine. And there is plenty of space to for improvement. So go keep going. <laughs> thank you.